Welcome back to Talking Lead. This is episode 36. How's it going, Left Hand? It's going good, buddy. Glad to have you back. Yeah, I'm back from my daddy-daughter dinner. I missed the show last week, but I had a blast with my daughter, so that was cool. Well, good for you. I don't think I can do another whole show by myself. <laughs> you had three lovely ladies help you out, though. I did. I did. It was a good time for you to be gone if you were going to be gone. Yeah, I missed out on that. But uh, they wore me out. Well, They had a lot to say. This week in guns, what did I do? I went on my first dove hunt. Why don't I ask you... Hey, Zeke, what did you do this week? That's probably a good idea. <laughs> I don't know why I did it that I way. I think everybody's anticipating to hear the story of your dove hunt. So Yeah, it was awesome. Let's hear it. Let's it, hear it. There's a lot of waiting involved with dove hunting. I didn't realize that. But there's a lot of waiting involved with any kind of hunting. Deer hunting the same way. But it was hot. I think that's why the waiting kind of felt a little bit longer. But uh, I ended up with three take home. I got six total, but three of them flew into the woods, into the tree line. We couldn't find them after that. But it was fun. I used my Benelli Nova shotgun. And, How'd that shoot for you? Uh, oh, man, that thing's a... It's light. It's it like is super light. light. And I thought because it was so light, it was going to kick a lot, but it doesn't. For a semi-auto shotgun, that thing was really light. Yeah, 12 gauge. It was fun. What'd you do with guns this week? Well, is that all you got for the hunting story? I want to hear more. Um, Let's see. Did you cut oh, those things up? I got up? shot. <laughs> you got shot like four or five times <laughs> what are you well talking you know about? how if, if somebody shoots from another side of a field with bird shot you kind of get peppered if you're directly in the line it doesn't that hurt. has never happened to me no yeah it doesn't hurt it just feels like little pebbles dropping on you but it was kind of a freaky experience realizing oh my gosh uh those are coming out of a shotgun <laughs> and pep pepper me in the back other than that you know i who was shot. that vice president that shot somebody on a hunting trip? Um, oh. Bush's vice president? Yeah. What's his name? Cheney. Yeah, Cheney. Yeah. So you pulled you pulled a Cheney? Is that, no, <laughs> that was a did? little closer range with that one. I don't know. <laughs> Ours wasn't like that. So you, you got three? Got three. Did you eat any while you were there? No, I ate them as soon as I got home, though. We cooked them, cooked them up, wrapped them in bacon, put some olive oil on them, and it's tasty. Did you cook them on a the grill? No, we baked them. You baked them? Yeah. Okay. Put them in the oven yep. with so it was the good. bacon. But they're little. So three dove didn't go very far. No, that's not going to feed much. No, it's like a chicken nugget. So I hope you had some sides <laughs> with that. <laughs> Maybe some baked beans. Yeah. Tater salad. Yes, we did. Yeah, Carrots, there rice. There you go. Atta boy. Baked potato. Now, that's not all you did with guns this week. You what actually, else did I do? You had a little shootout. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you forgot should, about that should, already? We should make them go to YouTube to watch the shootout. But no, let's tell I did, them about it. That way they'll go. I did a, uh, I did a card splitting shootout with 22 Plinkster, who lives right down the road from us. And yeah. we've been rivals since our teen years in basketball. So we kind of renewed that rivalry with, with firearms. And yeah. uh, I beat him. I won't say how I beat him, but y'all can just mm -hmm. go check it out on YouTube. Is that how you beat him in basketball, too? You had to resort to... Uh, oh. uh, no, <laughs> I beat him in basketball because he sat the bench. He was two years younger than me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what about you? What did you do with guns this week? Well, my, my week wasn't as eventful as yours, but I did a little dabbling in uh, some wheeling and dealing on some new firearms. Uh, got a couple of more in my sights. Again, I don't ever reveal those until they come to fruition. So we'll reveal those once they actually happen. Um, and I hope the one that comes to fruition is the one that I want because I will end up eventually buying that one from you. <laughs> I don't know. I may like it too much. Uh -oh. I'll let you borrow it. Yeah, that's about all I did this week. Uh, I did, did a little, well, I didn't have the cert pistol, but I did do practicing my draws and my form and clearing and, and all that with my dry firing and whatnot with my glass. I've had an extra week with a cert pistol. <laughs> Yeah, and I see it's still sitting there uh, I use it where up it was here. When, I, when I left. When I'm editing, I use it up here. Yeah, so. it's going home with me this week. <laughs> well, we've got Baby's a... Baby's coming home to Daddy. We've got a special, special guest tonight. As you know, we've got two or three Navy SEALs that are friends of the show, and they have recommended this guy. And hopefully we've got much more that listen to this Yes, show. very true. Uh, they've recommended this guy over and over again, and finally I went to his YouTube channel. And if you go to Buds131, have about two hours to blow, because I sat down at 10 o'clock. I didn't stop watching those videos till probably 1 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. or maybe a little earlier. So we've got Don Shipley <laughs> Here, Don, how's it going? It's going fine. I th you, you better send me the names of those seals so I can verify those guys. Make sure they're legit. <laughs> Ooh, we, we, we ought to we ought to run and buy them real quick. Could kind of have a little fun with that. We, we ought to call one up. Just uh, to let's, do let's see. Yeah. We got we got Ron Bellin. You you've already clarified uh, that with me. Yeah. Yeah. Mark McGinnis with the Seal Legacy Foundation. Yeah. 
Mark McGinn. Yeah, they all sound legit. I'm sure they are. Awesome. Too many, uh, Chris Eben. Too many phonies out there, but I'll pass your guys. They're, they're good to go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so give us a little bit about who you are. I know you've got the Extreme Seal experience, right? Oh, you guys were telling hunting stories. What about my weekend guns? Yeah, yeah you know what? It. There I go screwing up again. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Well, we, uh, we're running our course here, so uh, on Saturday, these guys finished. We're actually doing a little island survival today. I got them out in the Curatuck Sound, but last week, we were doing it on the river, and my gun world went into, I shot the biggest water moccasin I uh, ever saw on that river in <laughs> wow. 25 years for the guys, so uh, we were teaching them how to set snag lines out there, you know, a little bit of tactical survival fishing, and uh, just, I got a uh, an Air Force survival rifle. It's a little... Uh, 22 horn and the 410 conversion. My dad was a fighter pilot, and then, you know, those were bailout guns for the guys. But, uh, yeah, I dobbed them a big uh, big water moccasin, so they ate that. Sweet. And caught them a couple of turtles and the fish and everything. So, uh, yeah, shot him with a 410. But, uh, so, yeah, awesome. that was my weekend guns. So how do you go about uh, properly preparing a moccasin for uh, dinner? Uh, you know, it's not hard to just... Uh, Hang them up by their neck and uh, just cut that circle around and uh, just strip them on down. And you just eat them up. Don't worry about the middle. Uh, some uh, five fifty cord around the stick, and if you're a uh, parachute cord, and if you don't get it too close to the fire, you know, just cook them right on up. But good survival training, you know. And we put them down in these rivers and these swamps, and you know, it's a virtual grocery store down here. You just have to know how to find it and catch it. So uh, we don't send them out with any food. We don't send them out with any water. We teach them all how to procure that. And that's so much as a chicklet goes out in there with us. And, you know, we do well at the fishing, you know, tactical fishing. And I teach them, you know, you got to find the snakes and the turtles. So uh, it's tough. Most of these guys have uh, never been that hungry. They've never been that thirsty. You know, the water's there. you got to purify it. But for the first time in their life, you know, they, they can't get, grab a peanut butter sandwich when they want. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Pack of crackers just doesn't exist out there, does it? Now, is it is it the majority of them younger guys that are wanting to become seals, or do you take civilians that just want to kind of experience it too? Or well, let's back up just a oh, minute. Just tell a... us tell us what this is. This is the extreme seal experience, right? Yeah, I actually started this program for the Navy, and in, in 1992, I was asked to run. The Navy had Boy Scouts in it, for lack of a better term. They're called Sea Cadets, and you know the Marines have a version, the Army has a version, but. Uh, they would go on submarines and aircraft carriers. They had uniforms and rank structures and promotions and a little modified boot camp. But whatever interested them through the summer, they would put them on, you know, an aircraft submarine, an air wing, whatever. And I got asked to run the first ever SEAL Sea Cadet program. And uh, they were rock stars. Uh, the guys did much better at Buds by virtue of just hanging out with SEALs for a couple of weeks, and they found that out. So wow. it's the same way, you know, if you... You, you want to be a, a you know a, a, a good shooter. You hang out with somebody that's a good shot. You want to be a firefighter, hang out. You know anything. You know pro quarterback, and uh, so that's where it started down here. Uh, you know I ran that program seven or eight times for the Navy, and you know, we started it here for the young guys that aspired to be SEALs. But this course, I got a guy from Panama, one from Brazil, I got a guy from Switzerland. We've had them all over the world. I got an accountant, uh, 65 year old guy. So, so you opened it up to a civilian and military. No, yeah, well, that's what we thought. You know, well, not a lot of military. It's it's hard for the guys to get the leave time like that. And, you know, when you're active duty, that right. come down. We have had them before, but a lot of former guys. Uh, and it's great having them, you know, getting an ex-Marine, a former Marine. This guy's will hang me for that. There are uh, some <laughs> former military guys down here. Uh, the leadership's there, and a lot of professionals, doctors, firefighters, lawyers, cops. They come from all over, all ages, and just tired of climbing mountains. They, they're that type A personality. So, you know, always the strongest or the fastest guys. That's There's much more to being a SEAL than being able to do a bunch of push-ups. You know, you, your head's got to be in the game. So sure. we challenge them like that. Now, do you do you keep track of rates of people that pass buds after they've been through your course? Yeah, we've done very well. We got them at the highest levels, you know, since '92, and uh, you know, uh, you know, some of the accomplishments these guys have gone on to in the Navy is uh, quite astonishing, you know. But that's that type of guy, you know. For uh, uh, most guys, there's just no magic pill uh, to get through training. Any SEAL that has gotten, you know, you know, well, got through that training would consider themselves lucky. Sure. You know, lucky we didn't get sick. Lucky we didn't get hurt. You know, our mothers didn't have cancer. God forbid, died while we were in training. You had to have your head screwed on right. 
right. uh, completely undistracted for six months if you were lucky and didn't get rolled. But uh, you were lucky to get through the training. And a lot of good, really good guys were hurt, uh, couldn't overcome sicknesses and, and uh, family uh, issues. Well, just strange things that happened. Six months is a long time, man. Yeah. So that's how long Bud's is, is six months? Yep. Wow. Yep. It's a, a little bit shorter now because of the uh, wars, but they have added it on to the second uh, SEAL qualification training, which is a secondary program they go through. So they have lengthened that. So it's a year before these guys are going to get that tried in, and that coveted uh, tried in. How long is your course? Uh, I get, guys can come down here for one week, or they can come down here for two weeks. And uh, we're on the second uh, second week here, and uh, we're uh, we're all tired. We've earned it. So uh, we're on a beautiful island in the Curatuck Sound in North Carolina. These guys, uh, it's a fifty mile boat transit that they've done today. So oh, we, wow! So you're actually on a boat right now, now, right? We've got a uh, bigger pontoon boat, a really big one. You know, but uh, we follow them, kind of a mother ship. And uh, you know, haul the extra fuel, water, things like that, and keep track of them. But they, uh, you know, you come from uh, the streets of New York, and you're thrust into a, a very unforgiving environment out here in the Curatuck Sound. And you know, this uh, maritime navigation, it'll get you. So we we challenge the guys. You know, uh, again, you know, nobody comes all the way to my course to do a bunch of uh, flip and push ups. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to be challenged in other ways. And so the close quarter combat, repelling helicopters, all the work that we do, but the maritime navigation, you know, it's tough. You know, if you've never been out in that big water before trying to find your way, you know, you're just a speck. So uh, the guys did really, really well today. So uh, they're uh, they're chilling out, catching a few crabs, catching a few fish. and uh, Awesome. We're going to have a little items. barbecue tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's already going on. So uh, my wife's involved. It's uh, mine, her course, and she always, has, you know, I'm trying to run some uh, a little bit of island survival out here, and then she breaks out a bag of marshmallows for these guys. And you know, <laughs> hey, so speaking uh, about your wife, you, she's on a few of your videos, right? Uh, oh, she's tough, man. Okay. She she sounds like she's from our neck of the woods. She's got that southern draw like we do. Well, she's a uh, Tennessee girl. Oh, she Born is one of our. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, Smoky Mountain girl, and uh, we met in the uh, Navy. She was uh, one of the very first women on Navy ships, and I was, I guess, one of the very first guys on Navy ships with women before I became a SEAL. And, uh, we hooked up and uh, got married, and the rest is history. So we've uh, been together for 30-plus uh, years, and it's our 35th year, 36. Yeah. Y- y'all got to check out his videos. I've just watched one with his wife in there, and she's... She is hilarious. She gets right oh, with yeah. him too, boy. She don't let anything slip. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's one thing. When when the night that I was watching it after Ron had told me about it, I was watching it. And my wife started watching it too. She was more a fan of your your wife than she was you. <laughs> she was like, I well, like her. Uh, yeah, well, Diane tells it like it is, and she's yeah. got the background herself. You know, her son's in the Navy, and you know her background, and all our friends, and she just mothers these guys up. So uh, she can answer uh, as many SEAL questions as I can, and. That's you know, awesome. the tough love thing, you know, because I was uh, I was fortunate in the respect that I could go home at night in Bud's when we didn't have those nights off. You know, I had a meal prepared. I could go home and whine to her, and I, I, it helped me a lot uh, getting through SEAL training because, you know, Diane could have had both her legs amputated, and I'd have never known it. She just never delivered bad news. She knew the requirements of the Navy because she'd been in it, and an order's an order, and when I have to go, I have to go, and... It becomes very tough on guys today that don't have that. You know, they uh, wake up or they uh, come in from a terrible night at Bud's and their their phone's blown up with text messages from a a young lady they care about deeply, but she doesn't understand this whole military thing. And it becomes very hard on them. Why can't you come home? You know, just leave. Just come, you know, come to me. Come, I need attention. And, you know, Diane's tough. They get very independent, uh, SEAL wives do. I mean, if if it's broke, you got to fix it because, you know, I'm just not there. So she's. Been there and done it all, man. Who rough, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the talking lead jack wagon of the week, so brace yourself, baby. So, left hand, who is our jack wagon of the week this week? Well, I think we're going to let our guests chime in on that. And, okay. Uh, Don, who who would you like to uh, nominate for the jack wagon train this week? There is uh, no better candidate than A.J. Dickon. I never get tired of swinging at that clown, <laughs> and hopefully the... Uh, you know, the FBI, you know, they're uh, great guys. They dot the T's, cross the I's, and that guy goes to prison for a long time. I've done a couple of videos about him, but um, AJ. Uh, Give us a little guys profile. Over, uh, yeah. 
four hundred million dollars. Yeah, you know, he was able to convince guys. Never what? served the band. Yeah, wow. no, uh, he gifted. Uh, you know, and that's the way a con works. You know, he's a uh, he's a con artist, but uh, claimed to have been a SEAL commander and master chief and SEAL Team Six. He killed Bin Laden and all that stuff, and people believed him. So, uh, wow, you can see him up there, AJ Dickin, and uh, yeah, he, he he's my top of the list for Jack Wagon. Wow, so AJ Dickin, welcome to the Jack Wagon train. And from that story, I think he needs to be the freaking train engineer. He might he might have do- knocked Diane Feinstein off. Uh, he's on her shoulders, definitely. <laughs> wow. wow, that's pretty bad. Welcome to the Jack Wagon train, Mister Dickin. <laughs> you. D- <laughs> so we got a few questions that we ask every guest that we have on. First one being, how did you get into firearms? Was it something you grew up with? Was it the military? Well, I, I came from a uh, huge military family. You know, my grandmother had traced us all the way back through the Revolutionary War. My my uh, grandfather was sunk in World War One. My other grandfather was a captain in the Army in World War Two. All my uncles. and I used to have some really interesting Thanksgiving dinners when they would all get together and uh, the old women would be kicking them under the table, stop talking about that stuff. So, you know, um, you hear a lot about that. Oh, he never talked about it. He never talked about it. All my grandfathers and uncles talked about what they talked about. And uh, my dad was a fighter pilot uh, in the Air Force when I was a young boy, but uh, then he went to the National Guard, and he started to become a, uh, a commercial airline captain. But we grew up on a big farm in Pennsylvania, uh, near Pittsburgh. So, you know, if I wanted to go see a friend of mine, I, I rode a horse. Nice. Uh, we were way out there, but uh, I had guns. Yeah. And I grew up with guns, and, uh, you know, today I'm not a gun nut or anything. You know, I don't know, uh, you know, all that nomenclature and crazy ballistic things but you can invite me to go hunting for anything and I, i'd uh, i'd have a weapon to do it but uh, farm all the uh, pheasants and deer and you know my shotguns and i had two uh you know stupid dogs that i grew up with and all my trapping and hunting uh, that i did and all the fishing and it's, it's kind of crazy if my dad had not have sold that farm he transferred into uh, baltimore uh, Maryland, and uh, we moved. If my dad had not have sold that farm. It was a big beef cattle farm. Uh, I'd have probably never served a single day in the military. Oh, wow. I'd be on that farm right now. Wow. Uh, I loved every bit of the wide open spaces there and all my hunting and trapping, and, and I loved the cattle and, and taking care of them. So I was just a big old farm boy, man. That's awesome. And that, you know, when, when I got punished, my dad locked my guns up. That was the punishment. That was your punishment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I didn't do well in school. You know, I just wanted to, you know, I used to stare out the windows. I knew there was a big world out there. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I'd come home from school and load a box of shells, and I just went hunting, just shooting, shooting, shooting. It uh, was my whole life. You know, I few guns so uh yeah i had a good one i grew up i loved it so our this will get into our second question to kind of lead into um your military if you have law enforcement do you have any military law enforcement background so yeah. obviously you do tell us how you how you got into that uh my dad was uh tough he, he had that fighter pilot in him that air force thing and and i was the oldest son out of uh, three and i had two brothers and a sister uh, and me and my dad clashed quite a bit, you know, and I loved him. He gave me everything, but uh, we clashed. And uh, I knew there was a big world out there. And uh, at 17, I wasn't doing well at school. I wasn't a bad kid. I was just easily distracted. There was a big world out there, and I wanted to see it. And uh, I uh, asked them to uh, join the Navy reluctantly. They knew I was going nowhere. And honestly, I don't recommend it for anybody, but the smartest decision looking back at it that I ever made was to quit school and join the Navy. Mm. And 17, you know, I found myself getting tattooed up in Hong Kong and <laughs> failing seven seas. You know, I never looked back, and it matured me. I got my education there, but uh, again, I don't recommend it, but that was the uh, the route that I took. 24 years and 31 great days later, I uh, retired from the U.S. Navy. Loved every minute of it. Now, talking about SEAL retirement, maybe you can prep us. We're, we've been invited to Ron's retirement party in november yep. do we do we <laughs> need do we to like do some that? workouts i mean how do we prep for that we've heard they're big deals <laughs> well uh, eat before you go because uh, there's probably a little bit of drinking involved there so uh, you know get them some bread down you but uh you build our tolerance yeah, up. uh it's a uh, it's a throw down how long did uh, ron do uh 20 something years i think i want to say 24 yeah. maybe yeah i think 24 yeah yeah that sounds right yeah uh and good for him. You know, you you survive that. You don't retire from SEAL Team. You survive it. I mean, you know, all the jumping and the submarine stuff, everything in SEAL Team bites. And the minute you walk <laughs> through the door in the morning till you know, when you leave at night, you're just, 
you know, around the parachutes, you know, the rappel lines and the demolitions of bullets, and grain, you know, everything uh, there bites. And for a guy to have accomplished that 20 years, sure. uh, you know, he's got some real stories to tell. Yeah. And uh, so uh, you don't. We've all had some very close calls and, you know, training and accident and parachuting, things like that. So uh, good for him. He survived it. So and, tell us how you progressed into the SEALs. From the uh, regular Navy? Yeah. Tell, tell, us, tell us just a high-level progression how you ended up in the SEALs. I, I, I went to uh, Yokosuka, Japan, a uh, destroyer, and I transferred back to San Diego after uh, 32 months, I think, and was assigned to the USS McKee, and it had women on it. And I didn't, uh, I didn't think much of that. I did, really didn't like that too much. And my wife and I got married, and one of us had to leave the ship, and that was me and I got assigned to an assault craft unit, the old Saving Private Ryan, landing on the beaches, loading Marines, and that was in Coronado, California. And I remember asking a guy when I showed up there, I was like, who are those guys? And they're like, those are uh, SEAL trainees. And I really didn't even know what a SEAL was. And uh, But it looked cool, and they were allowed to have guns, and I learned more about it, and I said, I'm going to do that. It looks cool. And uh, so, that, I mean, that was it. I thought that looked cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, it did not take me long, you know, to uh, uh, train up, get ready, get approved back then. You know, blind, crippled, or crazy. If you met the standards, you were going. Uh, it's very tough now for these uh, younger guys to go, man. They're taking the absolute best of the best. But, you know, uh, about five months later, I found myself in, uh, in SEAL training in 1984. That's class 131, man. The rest is history. Another question we ask is, when it comes to pop culture, whether it's movies, TV shows, books, Video games, music, Magazines. if it involves firearms, what has been your favorite, your go-to? Modern day stuff. <laughs> like movies, TV shows, stuff like that. Like the, the old westerns, Top Gun. Okay, okay, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're still waiting for a Navy SEAL to say Navy SEALs to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> Which that was a horrible Well, you movie. know, I can talk about that like movie. That. It's actually a pretty cool story of how that movie came. But, uh, you know, pop culture stuff. You know, I love the old, uh, you know, war movies. John Wayne, my a you know, big hero, and you know, oh, Sands, yeah. Bewo, Team, all those, all those shows fired me up uh, to join the military, and uh, all the old submarine, you know, run silent, run deep, and awesome. you know, now my wife can't personally stand the black and white show, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I like them, and uh, you know, John Wayne's one of my big ones, you know, and, you know the, uh, the Searchers, uh, probably, you know, where he goes and rescues those uh, gals from the Indians is probably my all-time favorite movie. Uh, I always love the uh, military John Wayne, ones. into uh, yeah, Apocalypse Now, and you know, just the uh, the really good. You talked about that uh, Navy Seal movie. Yeah, yeah, you I ever heard hear this. Uh, yeah. any history on that? No, no, we want to hear it. Tell us about it. Well, you know what people have to understand about military uh, movies uh, when you really look at them is the Navy, uh, all the militaries will bite off on anything. You know, what You're people about have scripts? to understand about the uh, military and military movies is if the military likes a script, uh, whether it's a romance, whether it's a comedy, whether it's actually movies like uh, Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson, you know, in uh, Guantanamo yeah, Bay, you know, uh, mm-hmm. that make the military look a little bit bad, they'll fully support those movies. Sure. And that's where you see them on the aircraft carriers or actually on submarines, Top Gun things like that that people relate to. That was uh, fully sponsored by the military. You know, they're going to give you the guns, the training, the guys to do it. And Navy SEALs was one of those. Oh, wow. And I was there for all that when that happened. <laughs> uh, it was all done in the Little Creek area. And all the behinds of seeing the guys in that were actual SEALs who taught them how to carry guns, uh, taught them how to w- walk and talk like SEALs and all the guys in the planes and the, you know, the EOD, all the background guys were just SEALs and all buddies of mine that were in there. But the, the Navy, all they asked them to do when they got the script was, guys, can you tone down a little bit of the cussing in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> and so they did. They, uh, they cleaned it up a little bit. And uh, it was a very realistic movie in a lot of ways. And what actually happens during SEAL Ops, you know, the submarine really? work. and Oh, yeah, yeah. It was all done. You know, it's actual footage for a lot of that. Whether a lot of that was based on, you know, whatever fiction and things like that. And some of the equipment, the fire, weird sites and things like that. But, you know, the actual training sequences or actual things that they did in it and uh, you know it was uh very well done we had a, a big kick out of it there and then uh, the next thing was gi jane 
never yeah. came up. And the Navy said, no, um, we're not going to do that. We don't like it. It's uh, not a, you know, one aren't seals. We're not going to do it. And uh, from what we understand, Demi uh, went on and uh, made a big fuss to Bill Clinton and, uh, you know, say what you want about Bill, but he said, no, if the Navy's not going to support that m- movie. I'm not going to support it. Right. And that's where you start seeing civilian helicopters and mock-up compounds. You know, there's no military support for it. Yeah, uh, I always cool. thought that when I watched that movie that the helicopters didn't look like military he- helicopters. It was kind of like, something's off. Yeah, it was like yeah they got a stage. Gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, too bad Charlie Sheen didn't, like, stick with the integrity of what the SEALs taught him. <laughs> <laughs> He kind of went off the deep end. <laughs> no, hell, no, no, you know, you know, things happen in people's lives, man. You know, you got one in one life. Yeah. Well, one, his, it was tiger blood. Tiger blood and winning. <laughs> and winning. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny that you said that the Navy said, uh, well, we like the movie, just kind of tone down the cussing. And I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, because nobody in the military cusses. Well, I guess it was just one after another. So uh, oh, it had to be something that the Navy would say that. And it was just like the Alfred Hitchcock. I don't know if you guys ever heard the story of Alfred Hitchcock pitching that uh, thing. No. And I think it was the, uh, uh, what's that, uh, stabbing movie that they do, uh, Psycho. Psycho, yeah. And they, yeah, they, uh, they said, come on, man, you've got to uh, tone this thing down. This is terrible. This is terrible. And he said, okay, I'll do it. And uh, he sat on it for uh, a month, and he did nothing to it. And then he took it back to them, and they saw it again, and they were like, oh, that's great. Those changes are great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's perfect. Now we'll, we'll, we'll do it, man. We'll produce it. So I don't know, man. you gotta, you know, you got to be out there to uh, BS a BSer, I guess. Did you see the movie Act of Valor? Yeah, I did. What was your opinion of that movie? I thought it was great. I think uh, a lot of people overrated it, you know, and, uh, you know, I'll clear up, you know, you guys were asking about myths and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, we had seal calendars. Uh, We gave interviews. We were on TV. You know what? I I had a good friend of mine that was on Wheel of Fortune in his dress uniform, you know, when I was a a younger seal. And I guess you have to clap on that. They have to teach you behind the scenes. Okay. When you spin the wheel, you all have to clap. So, you know, we'd make fun of him because he's up there with a trident and I'm clapping like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's something you have to do on the Wheel of Fortune, you know, or you're not going to get. But a, a couple of incidences, and now we've uh, turned seals back into these uh, secret squirrel uh, things that go on. And it's really just to kind of tighten them up to keep the operations that are going on, you know, no pictures uh, being taken and things like that. And it's uh, kind of spiraled out of control into this uh, little secret society, and it's really not. Uh, Act of Valor, uh, when when I became a SEAL, we were shown a movie uh, called uh, Someone Special. It was a movie all based off SEALs and, uh, you know, actual SEALs, and it was a recruiting video. And you can get on YouTube and look at CIA recruiting videos. You can type and you Google their uh, YouTube CIA recruiting, and you'll see you have to be able to recruit. And that's what they had turned it in. We're, and uh, someone special had gone through changes over the years for more modern-day SEALs. And Act of Valor started out that way. It was nothing more than a recruiting video. And, you know, like someone special in my era and men with green faces and all these other things they showed were, were done in the recruiting video. And the, the Navy liked it. When they saw that, they were like, damn, you know, that's some good stuff. And they pushed it to a, uh, uh, a feature film, and they just kept rolling with it. So there was a lot of, uh, I guess, controversy of, uh, you know, and there's active duty SEALs. They can't be seen. They're, they're secret guys, you know, you know, the, you know whatever. And, uh, you know, crap. You know, that's crap. Yeah, it was a recruiting video, and they did it, and, uh, you know, it helps. You, know, you just can't stay silent and expect to get guys in your ranks. You have to show them. But, you know, that's really all it was. And I think it surprises a lot of people that were active duty guys in there. The Navy would do that, and there go the SEALs again. But the Navy pushed that. We work for the Navy. We're, we're Navy SEALs, and they liked it. And it's a recruiting tool for the Navy. We've got to get guys in. They compete with the Army, Marines, and Air Force, and Coast Guard. You know, the Navy has to do its recruiting as well. And, you know, if you go into any recruiting office today, it's just kind of crazy. You know, when I went into them, you know, they were just uh, pictures of ships and men of steel and all that other stuff. And now it's just nothing but SEAL stuff from the minute you go through the door. You know, recruiting for the entire Navy, you know, they put SEALs uh, up there. We're responsible for that. So right. You know, we asked uh, Commander McGinnis that. Like, 
question also and he he kind of had the same opinion that you do that it was you know nothing but a recruiting thing maybe you he gave it kudos but uh, you know he's calling calling it what it was yeah you know, i was just I mean, curious what, your take what was it was it and good for them i thought it was a well-made movie and uh, the guys did well and you know uh, i enjoyed I, it yeah so our fourth question has to do with firearms that you own or have owned. Is there one that you would be ashamed to admit to owning that you that you've ever had or that you have currently? You know, I can't. Uh, I really can't think of that. You know, I, I started out with a four ten single shot and you know, progressed to a twenty gauge. You know, single shot and then an Ithaca pump and all through. And ashamed of owning. I don't know. You know, I you know I wrote a story one time and it, it sort of shocked me. And uh, it was about a guy who said, you know, I was hunting before I could write my own name. I was carrying a gun hunting before I could write my own name. And I thought, how strange is that? You know, wow, wow. And then I thought about it and I said, I did that. Mm-hmm. You know, I did <laughs> yeah. before I could yeah. write my own name. You know, my dad had me out there when I was five. Yeah. Uh, and I did the same thing to my son. So uh, let, me re- the, let me uh, rephrase it. Is there what's the most unique firearm would you say that you've owned or interesting uh it's it, it's tough i i uh, i read your questions and things out it's yeah. tough but uh, uh because i've done so much in the military i've really shot a uh just uh, some of the biggest and best and fastest and the old tommy guns i've shot them to the uzis to the mac 10s to the wow. uh, more modern m60s 240s <laughs> yeah. you know all that and uh this I isn't a fair question for you, cold. obviously. <laughs> yeah, we're now, starting to learn. Kind of, we, we've had some special forces and special ops guys on, and we're starting to learn that's not the right question for them. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you know, we don't own crap. <laughs> yeah, I like the old guns. You know, it's really where I'm going to now. I'm, yeah. I'm more mature now. I like the old. My, my friend's got a 4070, you know, an 1868, wow. and a 4570. Oh, wow. And uh, the guys love shooting it down. Here's a breech loader. It's just <laughs> huge long uh, gun and uh, throws out a really hunk of lead. But I even got to the point, you know, I was a big hunter uh, before my son joined the Navy and uh, all the goose and duck hunting. But I'm at the point now where I'd really you know, like to get into the uh, black powder, you know, the old cap and ball shotguns and load my, you know, yeah. whamming it down the rod. I got into a lot of black powder. I really like that stuff. But uh, I don't know. I can't think of a single gun I'd, I'd be ashamed to say, I guess. Do you do you have one Fair like, enough. on your bucket list of one you just you you want to get one of those one day? That that would be on my bucket list, and they're not cheap. The old percussion uh, duck hunting uh, rifles, you know, oh, old twelve yeah. gauge, uh, you know, double uh, barreled, you know, where you uh, put the percussion cap on, and even mm-hmm. to the flintlocks now. You know, I've done all my share of deer hunting and you know the duck hunting and things like that, and you know with a uh, you know the full automatic ten gauge, you know the uh, semi automatic ten gauge and everything that we had and I grew up as a big goose and duck hunter, you know, when we did move to Maryland for I joined the Navy and I just had it kinda of all. So, um, you know, I'd go back. I'd go back to the basics. I love the old guns and I spent a lot of time in Afghanistan and uh, some of the weapons there that they had, you know, the old British Enfields and mm-hmm. down to the uh the actual old planes uh rifles, you know, the gun smoke uh you know uh uh, lever action rifles. It was just mm-hmm. guns, 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 man. There's just guns everywhere. And I, I would have loved to have just pack uh, all those and brought them home. I really like <laughs> the old uh, guns now, you know. So yeah. I don't have to shoot 550 rounds a minute anymore to, uh, to get a thrill. <laughs> you know, no. All lever action will uh, work for me. Something cool. There you there go. You go. With your extreme seal experience, we were talking about a little bit before. Left hand and I were talking. Okay, I wonder if he has a dumbed down version for old, out of shape podcast and youtubers <laughs> it's uh it's kind of all that you know and you're yeah. older guys and you, we expect the leadership out of the older guys you know again you know i walk a very fine line on the internet you know if i make it sound too hard guys don't come if I make it sound too easy guys don't come it's enough to say you know that if you're at the uh, upper end of that food chain you're going to work harder to help out the uh, back end of it sure and we go right for the middle of the pack but the older guys that come down here, everybody's got to get kick-started in the morning. You know, we've got back and knee problems. I've never told anyone they can't come to this course. Cancer, diabetes, severe food allergies, yeah. asthma, you know, it's, it has evolved into that. And, you, you know, it's the same thing in SEAL teams. You know, you're only as fast as your slowest man. You know, everybody takes care of that guy or not. Take, it's a, I'm, 
I mean, the word goes, you find all I do, all I do, and all they do in SEAL team is they find out what you're good at and they fully exploit that. So when you're in a SEAL platoon, we have our best shot to our worst shot. Uh, our fastest runner to our slowest, our uh, best swimmer to our slowest swimmer. And our worst might be most people's best, but we have that in it. So the worst shot, the platoon, is not going through the door first and during close quarter combat. And, you know, we don't send him to sniper school, but he's uh, a gifted point man. He can't get lost at night, you know, his night vision. So all we do and all I do down here is find out what you're strong at, and I exploit that strength. And I don't, I don't care. Uh, anything about what you're weak at, you know. Uh, so you've got a strength, so so I am six seven and burpees are the devil for tall people. So you won't well, explode burpees on me. Well, it's uh, back to that physical thing. You know, the hell night uh, is a little tough down here, but guys can get through it. It's designed. You know, I don't want anybody to fail this training. You know, guys travels. You know, Switzerland, Czech Republic, they're all over Europe, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere, Shanghai, China, from the last class, and they don't come here to fail. Sure. And, uh, you know, so I get them through training uh, out here. Don't make it easy, but I get them through. You've got a and, video uh, on your website that if somebody's unsure about coming to your course that they can watch that video. Yeah, it's two hours of what we do down here because a lot of that comes, you know, when you start talking about burpees and you mention SEAL training, you know, it conjures up these notions of uh, just mindless beatings and stuff, and that's far from what we do down here, you know. Uh, again, there's m- much more to being a SEAL than doing a bunch of push-ups. So you're not so waterboarding anybody down there? Come down here. I'm sorry? <laughs> I said you're not waterboarding anybody down there? <laughs> no. Well, I actually do show them so they get the uh, sensation of that. You know, they yeah. just put a T-shirt over their face with a little guard nose, and when they pull it off, so, you know, I get, you, know, you, <laughs> you, you ask taste. for it, I'll give it down here. You want to find you. out what that feels like, you know, I'll show it to you. You can that provide restraining right? you. Yeah. I'll provide it. <laughs> but, uh, awesome. Yeah, we want uh, guys to succeed. And, again, you know, there's much more challenging things with the shooting, all the combat shooting we do down here, and the rappelling and overcoming fears. And uh, nobody comes down here to do a bunch of push-ups, and I don't, I don't care about that. What? You can do much, much more with a strong mind than you can a strong body. Absolutely. I'll save that for the other guy to beat people up. I, I, I don't do that. I, I wouldn't even want to hurt your feelings down here, but you know, <laughs> it is tough. I demand a lot. I expect a lot. I'm very firm and hard with the guys. And uh, But, uh, you know, uh, when you win and you're doing that, you get rewarded. So it's called good deals for good seals. And, uh, and I reward these guys uh, when they really do well and they're getting one now. And, uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll come down on you if you're not, you know, because it gets dangerous down here. You, know, you, can, you can hurt or kill somebody down right. here real quick. So we we'll get it done. As, as far as your YouTube channel goes, how did you get into that? Did it start with more promoting the SEAL experience, or did it start with the phony SEALs? A little bit of both. Okay. Uh, I started that out as a uh, doing the course down here. We've been running these for seven years and started a little bit there and then started with a little bit of phonies, and then the two of them started coinciding. So, you know, when you say uh, a Navy SEAL either way, you know, phony SEAL or actual SEAL or SEAL training, you know, it all rolls into one. People are seeing all of them, and you know, people really started liking that, and I didn't. You know, when my son uh, joined up and uh, became a SEAL and, you know, all the things that I did and these terrible wars and where uh, we've lost a lot of SEALs, you know, just mm-hmm. some really brave guys in 70 uh, really bloody years that we've honorably served. It just really started consuming me. So it was a little bit of both. And then, you know, I really started getting uh, nasty with these guys when I really got into the uh, the phony thing and saw how deep, deep, deep this is. You know, really, I, I just came out swinging. Yeah, it worked we, hand in hand. A lot of these guys come to my course because they see me on YouTube and they go, yeah, I'm, I'm like, hang on, have a beer with him. <laughs> you, know, so, <laughs> you know, it works both ways. Yeah, we were out with one of the SEALs and... Uh, we had run into somebody else that was claiming to be a seal and he's like, okay, I can tell you right now he's not. And he, he, he named off like three or four questions and just rattle them off. And then all of a sudden the guy started backpedaling. Oh no. Well, well, and then he told us about you and the database you've got and all that stuff. And it's just fascinating to know. It's fascinating, but it's scary at the same time to know that there's so many people out there claiming to be something claiming to be, seals claiming to be the patriots that have done but not a only that but their country but a lot of them are like he said this this uh dickin guy yeah you know is profiting from it yeah that's scary well it, uh, it's a uh 
it's a much bigger picture. And, you know, I'm, I'm a very deep thinker. I always have been just how I got where I'm at, I guess. But, you know, this goes back to Washington at Valley Forge, man. You were stealing from all those guys throughout American history that had the courage to ever pick up a gun. And uh, guys and gals, uh, and to go forward. And, you know, I look at the, you know, we can get into phony seals, uh, you know, all you want. But, then, you know, you look at some of these uh, young Marines and young Army guys that come back without legs and they're, they're killed. It, it's all the same uh, big pie. Right. And they're stealing from all of them. And right. I just think, you know, when you get one, you're going to get them all. Yeah. And, uh so, uh, it, it, uh, it, yeah, it really bothers me. That blood pressure is going up a little bit right now. But, you, know, <laughs> you know, it's a very deep subject of these uh, cowards and thieves that would steal from these guys. And, you know, I've uh, known phony seals who would stand uh, the uh, race against legless veterans. Uh, Paul Furman in Texas is a, just a terrible uh, cad, you know, who would race against uh, legless veterans and then pose with pictures after he beat them. Oh my uh, God! Claiming to be a CIED guy, you know, got hit and blown up over there in Special Forces sniper, and he's just a complete piece of crap. Wow! But uh, they're uh, they're despicable, and uh, they steal not only from the veterans but from your wives. You know, my wife has certainly earned it. My daughter has earned it from the amount of time I was gone and wasn't there. And you know, the mothers, the fathers, the grandfathers. And, you know, really, when you get into it. It's much more than you just, you know, and I don't even go after the loud mouse in the bars. You know, we're never going to get away from them. But, right. And that's a, that's all this ever was, was, you know, throughout history, I, I know there's guys that claim service with the 300 Spartans uh, that never were. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> four, you, know, but, you know, all throughout history. But uh, you could only project that down a few bar stools at your local pub. But yeah. With the age of the Internet now, you can be anyone you want to be and uh, and announce it to the world yeah, and when scary. you put it up on the internet i'm gonna put it right back and tell everybody you know we have a problem one, i do it for everybody one thing that's cool is about the uh, cools wow cool. i can't talk one thing that's cool about the video is there's some that are amusing like the guy backpedaling and you're just grilling him on the right questions and he finally just gives up but then there's the ones that stick to their guns and you rattle off all these facts and all the research you've done on this guy and they still and those are the ones that get my blood pressure boiling. It's like, wow, are you that big of a sociopath that you can just keep going it even after somebody with credentials is calling you out on it? Yeah, that's like the dolphin guy. You know, when you're backed into a corner, you know, most of the guys, some of them, a lot of them, you know, they're going to go two ways. They're going to stick to their guns uh, or they're going to roll over and uh, play possum. Right. Uh, but, you know, like the dolphin guy, once they get off the phone and I tell them, you know, if you hear me on those videos, I'm telling them who I am. Right. Like what it is that I do. And then, you know, when they hang up, they're Googling, they're searching that, and they're going, oh, my God, you know, it's it's that guy. It's Chris Hansen from To Catch a Predator. You know, <laughs> you know yeah, that's him. And uh, they they call back, and they go, dude, I don't, you know, help me out with that recording. And uh, Jimmy Crackhorn and I don't flipping care. You know, I'm going to blast you out there. You you know, throw your lawyers at me. My lawyer's bigger than me than you are, you know. And I got a lot of friends in the military. They're saying, I don't care. Yeah. You know, I was a SEAL, you know, and I'm yeah. not going to back down to a single one of you clowns. So, yeah, uh, yeah I'll do anything to uh, uproot them. And uh, unfortunately, it's kind of fighting fire with fire. And it's not a fair fight often, uh, you know, uh, but I, that's how you uh, win. Um, I dubbed them in, that dolphin guy, you know, he called back and uh, things like that. And I'm getting ready to put up a... Perhaps the uh, the stupidest, ugliest uh, phony seal that's ever was. Uh, just a slob, buck tooth idiot. He can't write a coherent <laughs> sentence. He, he can't spell. Uh, every his grammar is so terrible. And he was trying to get his son in a very elite uh, Marine Corps sponsored leadership school, like the Sea Cadets were for uh, me and the Navy. Only it's much, much more. They only put like ninety five of these guys through a year. Wow! It's very elite, and uh, they were going to give him special treatment because he was claiming to be a uh, wounded Navy SEAL, and his son wanted to go to it. And that video is going to be up uh, here uh, before Monday, and uh, you'll see uh, what happens to him. But uh, yeah, they're uh, they're terrible. So I don't know. It uh, it's much easier for me sometimes when. You actually look the part when you're just not this big, stupid guy. You know, there's something good-looking about you. You're uh, a little bit on the eloquent side, you know, that 
But when you're at the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, you really, oh boy, you know, <laughs> yeah. just some big, fat, loudmouth guy. And, uh, you know, it's terrible. But this guy, so, yeah, oh, well, he's a moron. Wow. You know, has, get him. Has, anybody, has anybody ever been incarcerated because of your research? Yeah, a lot of them. I did a very cool, cool one up there. Uh, his name's Craig Schaefer, and you can find him in New Jersey, New York. But uh, Schaefer was on these dating websites. And these dating websites now for the girls who are out of control. And uh, especially Christian Mingle. Christian Mingle right now, we're getting a lot of these because you instantly kind of trust somebody that says he's a Christian, and you should not. But uh, Schaefer was on one of these dating websites, and he coded his phone number up there. He was looking, uh, he was dressed in a set of navy white, silver star, he had the seal trident, he was a lieutenant. He's a goofy-looking clown, but uh, he was up there, and you could not write your phone number, but he coded it. You know, he spelled out one, and he oh, spelled yeah. out three, and five. And I had my cousin uh, call him uh, from a Florida number. She was up uh, with us working, and uh, she uh, had him out there, and she uh, she said, uh, I'm from Florida, and I'm driving to New York on vacation. I saw your profile. I love a man in uniform. You're great looking. <laughs> and, uh, I, w- I could swing by New Jersey. Would you be interested in meeting me for a uh, you know a couple of drinks? And he was all over that. And I was right there, and my entire class was listening to it. And all we <laughs> needed was his name. And when he said it, then I grabbed the phone and went up one side and down the other, and we posted him as a phony. And just a couple of weeks after that, a reporter contacted me because she Googled uh, Greg Schaefer and uh, uh, and found out that I had outed him. And she said, did you hear what he has done? And uh, he lured a a teenage uh, girl across New York state lines and uh, raped her. uh, Freaking uh, predator. uh, All this child pornography stuff. And, you know, it's it's just not that uh, big a deal with these phony seals. They're terrible. Good for you, man. Phony seal uh, to death in Florida uh, last year. Uh, They're rapists. They're pedophiles. You know, people will only tell you they're a Navy seal when they're not for three reasons. To gain respect, to intimidate you to build trust mm. and uh schaefer was a very strange guy he got a lot of mileage out of it but his motives you know he just you know he's a very pure, pure evil guy. he's yeah. going to jail for a long time wow. good so, uh, he deserves it yeah. now ha- has there ever been one that you confronted that you were wrong on at all or is it all it's is the happened. database pretty f- it's happened but for and i don't confront you know i will check and i'm i'm really thorough uh-huh. Because I never want to be that guy. You know, I've established a lot of credibility as the guy that you can ask, and you're going to get an accurate answer. So when you fire off somebody, you know, I got a phone call today, and the gal said, you know, he claimed service in Cambodia. And I shot off immediately. He's a phony. There's no, 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 no. A right. seal Cambodia, forget it, okay? It's already a lie, but when you uh, send me a name, you know, i got to be very careful with that. And uh, it's happened a couple of times. One was uh, we got a report about the Comcast. That's a huge company. Mm-hmm. And their new CEO was a guy called Neil Smith, uh, S-M-I-T, and uh, said he was a former SEAL. Well, we looked in the database, and it was... Uh, really big and uh, there was no listing for neil smith and we were going back and forth you know me and a couple other seal verifiers are very few of us only, you know, i'm the only one doing it now but you know how wow you know really big stuff you know this is a, a big fish to fry but upon closer look uh, there was a cornelius smith uh, and I guess if your if your first name is Cornelius, you might go by Neil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my first instinct. Yeah. I would yeah. hope he would yeah. go by Corny. <laughs> Corny. No. So uh, you know, Neil Smith is a uh, very talented frogman officer and uh, head of Comcast Cable now. So Good for you him. have to be careful. You have to. A lot of people, like my wife, goes by her middle name and not her first name. Sure. Yeah. And uh, a lot of guys do that, and you have to look at them. I did get in a conference. Uh, a little bit of one from a, a seal named Blueford. From you know, what? That was his first name, Blueford. Blueford? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually had a seal and a UDP guy in Vietnam named Betty. Wow. And, uh, well, so not it, only do you got to, you know, watch the, the names and middle names and stuff like that, but you got to watch them if they have sex changes, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. There is yeah, one of those so, out there. <laughs> you know, oh, you uh, look at the middle names, you look at claims, you look at history, dates, uh, time frames, ages. you got to be very careful, because honestly, my biggest nightmare would be to ever call out 
an actual seal and make a huge deal out of it when he actually was. And uh, knock on wood, you know, so far. But uh, I really gather a lot of information on you before I blast you on YouTube. I just don't randomly uh, do those guys. I kind of pick the best of the best and get some pictures and video, and then I'll, I'll really go after you. So. Awesome. And it's it's not even attacking those guys. I'm attacking the story. Sure. Mm-hmm. The the tale, the Cambodia, North Korea, Iran, and you know I'm uh, I'm very close to offering a uh, a bet to anyone, hundred dollar bet that you send me the name of uh, the person that you think is an, actually a Navy SEAL, and I'll bet you a hundred dollars I don't find him. And I'm trying to work out how to uh, to do that. I had a uh, Boston fire. You know, it's like when you guys told me about the SEAL. I had a Boston firefighter call me and. Uh, you know, Boston firefighters, you know, that thick accent, you know, they're high-strung mm-hmm. guys. And uh, uh, he asked me about a name, and I told him, no, he's not a Navy SEAL. And that guy flipped, you know, in a total expletive flying Boston type of firefighter thing you've seen in all the Departed movies and stuff. And he said, I got two, but my two best friends are Navy SEALs, and when they find out about this, and I said, well, what's their name? And he said, no, no, they're really SEALs. And I said, I got the database open. What's their names? And, and neither one of those were guys were listed. I thought the guy uh, was going to kill himself. Wow. So, <laughs> you know, there's so many people right now that are listening to this. And when you air it, that are sitting next to a SEAL. And he's got this uh, kind of uh, you know, grimaced face on. And he's trying to smile. And he's trying to laugh. And they're like, listen, they're talking about phony SEALs. You were a SEAL. And he's not one either. <laughs> you know we're going to be getting know, a lot they, of people send us um, messages now. Say, can you have so and so checked out for me? Oh, I've already. I went to the Nashville Armory today, and I told him who we were having on the show tonight, and he was like, "Oh gosh." He goes, "I've got four or five that are in here all the time. I want him to run and check out." <laughs> he goes, "Because they just well, don't they, seem uh, like they are." The number one state for seal imposters is Georgia. Oh, wow. Followed by Florida and Texas. And the number one profession is martial arts instructors, followed by firearms instructors, followed by dive uh, instructors. You know, you establish credibility that way, and we all have to right. do it. Why should you take lessons from me? Because I'm a, I'm a, a trained ninja. ninja assassin guy. You know, I've killed a lot of dudes with these hands. And so, uh, you know, but uh, people really believe it. They call me because he's uh, he's really big. I hear that. He's really muscular. <laughs> he's in shape. He's really loud. He, and they don't until he trips himself up. You know, he says something that doesn't make sense. But people, you know, watch these videos of mine. You know, these phony seals of the week and their elbow and the guy next to him, you know, that they really believe is a seal and he is not. Your chances of bumping into a uh, actual living, breathing Navy seal are about one in 46,000. Because there's only, what, country. what, like 2,000 alive right now or something like that? Uh, 2,500 on active uh-huh. duty and uh, through 70 years, you know, there were so many guys in World War II. You know, there's only been a little over 18,000 guys in 70 years that have gotten through any form of underwater demolition team, scouts and raiders, Navy combat demolition units, or SEALs. And it's uh, just very few. Uh, so we estimate there's uh, less than 10,000 guys alive today. All our World War II, Korea, Vietnam vets, and uh, all these that... Uh, are still actively alive, and they're all over the planet. Yeah. Another fun fact is four out of five guys uh, that claim service in Vietnam are lying about. It. Wow. When you yeah. bump into somebody that says he served in Vietnam, four out of five of those uh, guys, if you line them up, are lying about it. That's according to the U.S. Census Bureau. It's a, uh, it's a plague we're in, an epidemic. And a lot if of your them high are school principal, the members of the clergy, politicians, floor. police officers, sheriffs, firefighters, all these people in positions of trust. And those are the ones that really get over when you really trust them. I really go after these uh, phony religious guys, you know, the yeah. members of the clergy that claim that really bothers me. But uh, people firmly believe there's no way. No, he is a seal, and, and he is not. So do you have something set up where people can go and report report these people to you, or how do you how do you come about these names that you research? Uh, I've got so many email outlets, it's really hard for me to keep up with. You know, I really do my best. I, I work exhaustive hours with these guys, but, you know, people call me, they send them over Facebook, uh, my website, my uh, uh, personal emails, they send them over YouTube, and I really do my best to keep up. But uh, oftentimes over a SEAL exploit, when like Bin Laden was killed, I couldn't get through the email. I was verifying over 50 a day. But a typical day is uh, 25... Uh, you know, 15, 25 to 30 claims, often more than that, and uh, very, very few. Maybe one or two out of 100 are actually legit Navy SEALs. Wow. 
So last week we had a trivia question about Nicole McLean. What was that, left hand? Nicole wanted you to tell us the name of her big sweetie, her dog. And the answer to that is Lieutenant Colonel Mogador Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually had somebody who got the right answer. We had some people that answered it, but they didn't get the complete name. And the winner is... The Jerry, winner is Jerry B. Jerry B. You won the uh, Nicole McLean trivia question, and she's going to be sending him something, right, right? She's got a calendar, and she's got one of her um, magazine editions that she was in that she's going to send the winner. So, Jerry, send us your contact information, and we'll pass that along to Nicole, and you will get a lovely calendar and magazine featuring Miss Nicole McLean. Don, are you McLean, sorry. Don, are you familiar with Nicole McLean? No, I'm not. Her her fiance is actually a seal, Chris Heben. Oh yeah, I know yeah. Chris real well. Yeah, yeah, that's her that's her fiance. Mm-hmm. She Oh really? Yeah, they're putting she's a big hunter, actress, model. Oh, and, that's great. Uh, she was on the show. If I had a nickel, if I had a nickel for every time I had to verify Chris he, uh, Heben, <laughs> uh, you know, that's the unfortunate part of dealing with these phony seals, actual seals get called out plenty, but we expect it. You know, we go with it, and Chris knows. Sure. Uh, yeah. It's got to be that way. And then we're going to do a trivia question based off one of your YouTube videos. So the trivia question for this week, if you go to YouTube and go to the channel Buds131 and look for the video, Don Shipley's Phony Navy Seal of the Week is Dave, and that's Dave in quotations, a Texas dot, dot, dot. In that video... He shows a picture of this guy, Dave, and he's got a hat. What is the logo on his hat? And what class does he claim that he was in? So it's a two-part question. What class does he claim he was in, and what is the logo on his hat in that video? So send us the answer to that. And the winner will get? The winner will get a SEAL Legacy Foundation hat. Courtesy of the SEAL Legacy Foundation. And now it's time for Facts to Fight fight, fight, the Myths. myths. And Don, do you have a SEAL myth you want to kind of debunk? Yeah, it's kind of in a couple of parts about SEALs, but... uh you know, uh, a lot of these guys come down here to this course. They're very nervous. They've never seen them. And the big myth is that, uh, you know, seals are all these six foot, you know, six, uh, 270-pound golf one looking knuckle drivers uh, without personalities or mindless robots. We just do whatever we're told and we're not. You know, we, we eat at Applebee's. I mean, and we have families. We coach softball teams where, you know, we go to barbecues. We have, you know, we're all that. We're the all-American boys. And uh, a lot of that revolves uh, back into this Boston Marathon uh, bombing and, uh, you know, the implications of SEALs were involved. I, I, I would tell you, I would love to see somebody uh, stand up in front of a bunch of SEALs and go, guys, uh, we want you to go kill a bunch of people in Boston at the marathon and, they and do see it. who dies quickly. Right. And, you know, we just don't do that. We were accused, you know, it's these uh, conspiracy theorist stuff of, you know, blowing up the levees and, uh, you know, for uh, Katrina and just these different things. And, and we're not. We're uh, uh, we're good guys. We're the uh, bad boy club. Uh, we are. You know, there's got to be guys in this country who will do that. And, uh, but uh, we're not those uh, kind of guys that just blindly follow orders. You know, we have those uh, moral scruples and ethics. And, and Mike Murphy's a, a classic example. You know, we're not going to kill these guys. We're going to let them go. And unfortunately, we're bad. But. You know, uh, we're like that. And, uh, sure. So we have personalities. We're very entertaining guys. We have very dark sense of humor. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. we've learned that quickly. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. awesome. So, uh, it fits in perfect with us. Yeah, and uh, I think that would be the biggest thing, you know, the uh, myth about actually what a Navy SEAL is. Uh, an actual Navy SEAL is a little under six feet tall, an actual SEAL. Is a buck fifty, a buck eighty, and uh, there's all these really big guys like me and Buzz, and, uh, and then we have the Smurf guys on the smaller end, and you know it's harder for us. It's, it's designed for the average American, just right. like the uh, you know you're looking at the scope on the Dragunov uh, sniper rifle. The old Soviet rifles were designed for a six foot, uh, five foot ten American. Mm-hmm. You know, the average age of an American soldier. You know, those scopes were built around those, so. It's funny that that's your myth because we just mentioned Chris. When we were at the NRA convention, we went to the cigar and brandy party. And it was a few of us kind of lining this wall. And some of the big corporate, big wigs, politician, they kept coming to me. And Chris is, Chris is what, probably five, 
nine, five ten, maybe at the most. I'm five nine, and he's he's a little bit taller, just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and I'm six seven, so I was the big guy in the group, and everybody kept coming to me, going, "Oh, were you with team two or team?" And it was funny because I kept thinking, "Was that a basketball team I was on or something?" I was, I was like, "What are you talking about?" And Chris is sitting there giggling, and I'm like, "What?" And then I was like, "Oh no, I'm not the seal. He's the seal." <laughs> But they because I was the big guy, they immediately shot to me thinking I was the seal. So it's funny that you said that because I actually experienced that. You're like a magnet, Zeke. Anytime you're in the room. (laughs) I'm a freak of nature. (laughs) Everybody's eyes are drawn to you. Whenever I'm around, nobody knows when you're in the room. (laughs) You're lucky. You get to maintain your anonymity. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) There you go. That's what people think. And it's uh, very refreshing for these young guys to come down here. You know, they got the seal posters and the videos. They've read the books and actually come down here and see that, you know, you guys are just regular guys. You know, you're just, you have that different mindset. It's uh, very refreshing for them, and, uh, you know, I welcome it. So it's all good to go, man. We're just, hey, let's go out to Applebee's, man. Let's get some dinner, you know. There you go, exactly. <laughs> Taco we'll Bell, man. One, we're man. all about it. You know, yeah. We're, Do you love those Dorito tacos? Oh, do you? No, I have not had one yet. I saw somebody eat one in the airport the, uh, not long ago and asked them how that was. They I are the best. Don't, you got to get one. Don't, came, don't get one. They're like crack. <laughs> no, nah, hell. Now nah, you've ruined it. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> and uh, Maybe we can get a sponsorship out of this. At Taco Bell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Did you have a fact about the myth? Um, I was just going to do a factual error since we were talking about the movie Navy Seals. Uh-huh. I was going to do a... Uh, kind of a continuity factual error that they had in the movie go for it okay <laughs> so don you live in virginia right or do yeah. we need to announce that i think you've got it on your website so i don't think it's a secret right yeah okay uh so in the hotel room scene where charlie sheen's character hawkins and the reporter are in the room together they're in they're supposedly in virginia beach virginia there yeah. are naval ships in sight out their window. Well, in actuality, the naval base is located at NOB Norfolk, and it's 20 to 25 miles from the ocean front. Uh-huh. Actually, there's uh, two uh, bases up here where the uh, ships are, the two bigger ones. is NOB Norfolk, but the Little Creek uh, Amphibious Base has all the uh, the bulk of the Gator freighters, you know, the Hall Marines, all the LSDs, the LSDs huh. you know, we used to have the LSDs. So uh, it's the fleet there, but I don't think they could see them from there. Right. But, you know, that's the uh, Hollywood thing. They had to get the gal in the movie. That's the only thing that really upset me about <laughs> the movie. They had to get the gal. And, yeah. you know, and, and throughout history, you know, when we talked about the old movies, uh, my dad's favorite movie, and one of mine now, is the uh, Gregory Peck as uh, a, uh, a bomber commander in World War II, and I'm, I'm struggling with the name of that thing. They used to show it as a motivational uh, movie uh, for the uh, fighter pilots, uh, air cadetmen. And it was the only movie, they say, in Hollywood that did not have a woman in it. And not oh, one wow. scene was there a, a woman in it. And I'm trying to think, that should be your trivia question. Uh, Gregory Peck, uh, I'm, uh, my dad's going to kill me right now. Bomber 12 o'clock pilot. high? Uh, you're a 12 o'clock high, that's it. There you go. Yeah, that baby. is it. That is a badass movie, man. I'm going to have to go watch and, uh, it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we went through Hell Week and Buds, they showed us a motivational movie uh, before, and it was Mel Gibson, and he was an Australian commando in World War II, and it was uh, Zulu or Zebra or something. I yeah, I saw that movie. Yeah, I know what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, and they locked off a submarine and things like that. That was ours, but my father's, uh, you know, as a fighter pilot, was 12 o'clock high, and they called that the greatest leadership movie ever made, and the only movie that there was not a single flick of a, a woman in it anywhere. So, uh, yeah, they had to get the chick in there somewhere. And uh, God love <laughs> hey, I, I'm a, a big fan of the ladies, I'll tell you. Awesome. The Navy well, now, there, they, there yeah. was a nurse. Her name was Joyce McKenzie. And, um, that was the actress to, who played the nurse. He's looking this up online. He's not yeah. like a savant. No, guy. I'm not. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm going to IMDb. I was going through there, but she may not even know. I don't know, screen. man. I don't remember it. Maybe she got cut. She's on the editing room floor somewhere. Yeah, she got I don't credit, remember though. A, uh, I remember my dad saying that, but I don't remember a single uh, gal in that movie. That's or anything. Yeah, 12 o'clock high, Gregory's Probably back. in the background somewhere you never even saw her. 
We're going to... Uh, nah, I don't think so, fellas. Let's, uh, hey, I, if I owe a T-shirt or a case of beer, you know, let me know. But uh, I'll fire it right <laughs> off if I'm wrong. Here we go. Here's a, here, that's our secondary trivia question. Was is, she on there? Is, yeah, is there a female in 12 o'clock high? I think some of our sponsors. we got the Firearms Radio Network, firearmsradio.tv. We've got ICE Training. ICETraining.us, our good buddy Rob Pincus out there, and that whole conglomerate with the PDN also. Personal Defense Network. Which I'm sporting their t-shirt today. We have US Elite Gear, us-elitegear.com. Com. And you can go on there and get any of your kit needs if you go hunting, backpacks. They just had an awesome everything. Labor Day sale. And uh, remember, if, I don't know you, if it's still going on or not, but you can always use our code. Yep. Which if you is, use our code, which is Talking Lead, you'll get a pretty decent discount there too. So at, at checkout on US Elite Gear, enter Talking Lead and you'll get a discount. Also, All or Nothing Tattoo Company in Atlanta, Georgia, All or Nothing Tattoo.com, and their very gun friendly merchandise site, Stranglehold Merch.com. Go down there and get you a gun tattoo. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Holder no. and Green Professional Real Estate Services, HG Press. Call them at 1 800 615 1840, extension 2222, for all your Middle Tennessee real estate needs. And then, Don, if they want to come and do the Extreme Seal Experience, how do they get a hold of you? Website? YouTube, Facebook, Facebook any, of, any of that stuff. ExtremeSealExperience.com or they can Google Don Shipley phony Navy SEAL. <laughs> there you go. You'll find it. Okay. No, there you go. You'll, I'll, you'll find it up there. Man. Don, I love your logo, too. The frog with the trident. That is awesome. Yeah, we have a uh, famous guy down here, uh, uh, Joey Nobody. I'll throw a plug out. <laughs> Joey uh, Nobody? His actual name. <laughs> Joey Nobody. That's his actual name. And, wow. Uh, he does all the ink for the seals down here, and uh, Sweet. that's a another myth that uh, you know you're not allowed to have tattoos. Seals are inked up, inked <laughs> up big time, and uh, he does. And you can Google him in Virginia Beach. He's a great guy. And then if they want to check out your YouTube channel, just type in Buds One Three One B U D S One Three One on YouTube, and you'll be able to check that out. Mm-hmm. YouTube user slash Buds131 or Phony Navy Seal of the Week, Extreme Seal of the Week. Uh, yeah, that's the largest uh, seal channel on YouTube, man. I think we're, on a, we're pushing 9 million views. So wow. We do it. That's awesome. All right, Don, thanks again for coming on the show. We've had a blast. It's been uh, awesome. We'd love to do it again. It's a pleasure. Thanks, thanks Don. We'd uh, Thank love you. to have you on again sometime, too. Thank you for your service, too. We greatly appreciate that. Anytime, folks. And as always, left hand, keep, keep your loved ones close. close. And your firearms closure.